Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodie from Decorous Vintage Designs and this piece in front of you here was inspired by an old Mediterranean water fountain and in today's tutorial I want to show you how to get this look. Hello, hello, hello. It's Jodie here from uh, Decorous Vintage Designs. Um, so yeah, so what I thought today was um, I want to try some new colours, maybe some colours that maybe I've never really tried so much before. So yeah, so I'm going to be using some sea spray today. I'm also going to be using a little bit of woody bend. All right, so I've already got a little bit of woody bend on here. And I've also just got a couple of keyholes on here. So I'm going to get started with this woody bend. Okay, and I just thought I would pop it there. So the surface is reasonably flat, but I thought maybe I would um, come in anyway and just maybe give it a little bit of a heat up just in case there are any curves that I'm not aware of. So I'm just going to get my old battered hair dryer. Look at that, look at the state of that. <laughs> and then uh, I'm just going to heat this up. A bit of glue on there and I'm just going to kind of stick it on there. So I always use a little bit too much glue, the excess is popping out a little bit but that's fine because uh, it's going to be like a textured look anyway so that's great. There we go. The only imperfections I can hide with sea spray. <laughs> this is why I like my looks, like I can hide everything with sea spray. Um, and then look it sticks, that's how quickly this wood glue and the woody bend sticks. There we go. So I'm just going to leave that be and I'm going to mix my first batch of sea spray. Right, so I've just got a bit of Tupperware. Right, so I've got some sea spray and I'm going to get started with a little bit of sand bar, which is like a nice taupey colour, I would say. It's got like a little, it's kind of like a cream with a bit of brown in there. Um, and I'm going to pour out to start with uh, just a little bit of this sand bar in the corner here. Not a lot. Um, and then... So you need to use normally about two scoops of sea spray to eight ounces of paint. Obviously I've not used eight ounces of paint now. So I'm literally gonna come in with just a tiny, tiny little bit and just pop that in there. And it's better just to build it up slowly uh, because that way then, you know, you're not gonna use too much and it's not gonna be hard to use. Um, and you want it to be like a cake batter like consistency so I'm literally starting with this much because I know I'm going to bring other colours in and if I need to I can always come back and add more. Alright so I am putting my sand bar and my sea spray on the top of this piece. I am using a technique called stippling which is one of my favourite go to techniques which basically means I am just dabbing and when you do this just make sure you use a brush that you don't care about, a one that is pretty inexpensive because it can be quite harsh on your brush. All of the products I am using today as well will be listed below um, including a 10% off discount for Would You Bend. So I will talk you through the products through this uh, video tutorial today but if you get a little bit lost don't worry they're all going to be listed below. The first part of this tutorial was also um, filmed live but I have edited it because I think it's just a little bit more convenient for you guys you know if you're watching something that is sort of a condensed version rather than the full version in my opinion. So I've got this so this is a standard Jodie pot <laughs> but you can't even see the writing. Um, so this is a terracotta colour, this is called terracotta orange. I'm going to pour a little bit of my terracotta orange in there now as well. So I'm just going to put about that much in there. So I'm coming in now with a, obviously a very, very strong and different colour. And I am just going to put this underneath the sandbar. This is the new Best Bang brush, um, which is a synthetic and uh, natural bristle brush. So it's quite loaded and quite thick. Um, so I think this will be quite good for stippling. It's not out yet, it's due to be released soon, so I'm going to use a clean brush and I'm just going to blend some of this away with a clean brush. Blur the close lines a little bit. Just soften it up. Whilst this is definitely going to be a rustic look, there is going to be a fine line between it looking rustic and also it looking kind of pretty. So I just want to make sure that there's no harsh lines at the moment, especially because they are two very different colours. So by coming in with a clean brush and especially this one because it's such a large surface area and just tapping around those edges, it is just going to very, very softly, um, you know, soften up that line. 
So I'm actually going to come in with another colour now. I'm going to bring in some pine cone. So this is a nice, I think it's like quite got quite a rich colour to it. I'm not always very good at describing colours, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, can you see that? I think it's better to show you than me trying to explain it badly. Okay, so I've come in again with the same measurement of sea spray and I'm basically just going to follow the same process. I am popping the pine cone underneath the terracotta. It is a little bit more in the same colour group as what the terracotta and the sandbar was. And I will have my best dang brush on hand just to blur out those lines a little bit. I haven't bothered cleaning the best dang brush or anything. I'm just going to go straight in there with it, um, even though it's still got a little bit of the sandbar on there because it encourages blending. Right, last colour I promise guys. So this is Muscadine Wine. Can you see how like they're all in similar colour groups again? Okay, so this is the exact same process again as before. I am placing my Muscadine Wine underneath the pine cone and I have, you know, used the same amount of sea spray. So with the woodie bends, as you can see here, I'm painting over some trimming. You can either paint them if you know exactly what you want to do with the look of your furniture. So you can paint them before you put them on. I just personally always find it easier to put them on first and then paint them over, paint over them as though they're part of the furniture. The Muscadine Wine is a very overpowering colour, so this one is going to be a little bit more difficult to blend. So what I did actually do is give a, give my Best Dang brush a wipe, just on some kitchen towel, just to get rid of some excess every now and then, because the Muscadine Wine really wanted to take over the rest of this piece. So once this is all dry, I came in with my sandbar and I'm just sort of randomly dry brushing some of my sandbar in some areas. So dry brushing is basically just where you have a tiny, tiny little bit of paint on your uh, brush and you just wipe it off onto the furniture. But you can see here, because of the sea spray and because of the details in the woodie bend, it really kind of creates a nice texture as it settles on top of all that sort of lovely sea spray texture and things. I also came in and just added a little bit of the terracotta orange into some areas. There's no kind of specific reason for this or where I placed it. I'm just trying to think of where, you know, something might have become weathered on an old um, water fountain. I've actually got paint right there. I just see, oh, oh well, I'll leave it. <laughs> okay, so. We've got this kind of like patinery, rustic, stone sort of thing going on here right now and I still want to rough it up a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is, does anybody's workspace also like just descend into absolute chaos as you work in it? I wish you could see just all the chaos down here because, uh, beneath me, it's crazy. Um, doesn't matter how much I try to be organised, it just it just gets chaotic anyway. Um, they do say an artist's brain is very messy, so maybe that's why. Okay, let me try and find my cuts <laughs> that I have just literally had a second ago. They were up here all along. <laughs> so I'm just going to have a play now and I'm actually going to start with chocolate, which is a nice deep warm brown. Can you guess where I'm going to put this colour? I'm going to try and get the lid open because that's always a good start. There we go. And I am going to pour a little bit of this chocolate into the cup. Not too much. I'm just going to grab my water mister and just spray some water in there. In fact, you don't even need to spray it and just pour a little bit in. So it's probably going to be about half and half. Give it a good stir so it's nice. And it's quite drippy like this. So I'm mainly going to focus the chocolate around where I put the muscadine wine. And as I am, I'm going to paint it onto the piece, but I'm going to have some kitchen towel to hand as well and my water mister just to make it very washed out and drippy. And then I'm just going to pat with my kitchen towel just to wipe off any excess, just to give it that very natural worn look. I want to create some variations in colour here because, again, this is meant to be a very old worn look. So I did look at a water fountain for inspiration for this piece and they were pockets of colour everywhere and, you know, there was no solid colour, there was different variations and shades and things like that. So I was just, I had that in mind when I was painting this piece and I just wanted the brown to add some age to this. 
I am putting some Weather Terracotta oranges, but as you can see, it's not a lot. It's not like the amount I was putting where the Muscadine wine was. And that's just because I do not want this to overpower such a lovely soft colour. I'm then just grabbing my kitchen towel and if I do feel like there's just a tiny little bit too much on there um, you know you can just always rub it off with your kitchen towel a little bit and it will make it look more sort of watery and weathered um, so don't ever panic when doing a look like this because it is very very easy to rectify if you do something wrong because it kind of just adds to the overall character of the piece because we're going for something that's meant to be quite rustic Okay, so here I am coming in with some watered down burlap and I am basically just following the same process as before, but I am focusing this more around the top of the door edge. And then just to blend some of those burlap edges in, I am coming in with my watered down chocolate and focusing that on the bottom of the door edge, again, just following the exact same process. The tapping is a technique called ragging and it is also another technique that I absolutely love and go to all the time because this in itself will help create some very, you know, good textured effects which creates that faux stone look that I am looking for here. Okay, so I did decide that the burlap and the chocolate were just a tiny little bit too overpowering. I still want some of that colour to pop, you know, to shine through underneath. So this is where there's no mistakes because I, you know, I just... All I was able to do was just spray it with a little bit of water, do a little bit of tapping, and then voila, I've got the look that I want. So at the top here, I actually have a watered down French linen mixture. And again, just the exact same process, but this time I'm using an artist brush because I really want this to look like it has, it has just had tons of water on it at some point and it's looking very drippy and weathered. The French linen is very, very subtle. However, as you can probably see there though, it is still looking like it's leaving some marks. So if you think of something that's just had lots of water on it over time and it's it's been quite damp and you know, you just, you have those watermarks left behind. And this is kind of what I'm thinking here at this point as I am adding the French linen. I now have some copper gilding wax and an artist brush and I am just dry brushing some of this over the top. I want it to look like maybe it was very grand and it had some beautiful copper or gold, you know, metallics on it at some point that I've now worn down. And so I am just being very, very careful with where I place my gilding wax because I want it to look like it has started chipping and wearing away. So now that the bottom has dried, I really want to start thinking about bringing this together a little bit because obviously at the moment it is in its hot crazy mess phase and you know it does need to be brought together so that we've got a nice pretty piece at the end. I have an artist brush which has quite a round edge and I have my muscadine wine again and also some French linen and I'm basically just patting the artist brush and the paints onto this and mixing the two paints together just to give that very faded grandeur effect. This did take a little bit of patience with such a small brush, I am not going to lie, um, but the effect was worth it in the end, I think, because the, what, what it meant by using a smaller brush is that as I was tapping, it created, you know, tiny little brush, brush strokes and things like that. And for me, that just added more impact to this piece because each brush stroke was its own little sort of pocket of texture. So here I am coming back in again with my terracotta orange and I am just going to start blending this a tiny little bit into the muscadine wine. I am using a fresh brush for the um, for the terracotta orange because it can the muscadine wine can be an extremely overpowering colour as I said before so I don't want to you know use the same brush and then it all just basically be muscadine wine. So I am just alternating between brushes here until I get a very soft line that I am happy with.
At the top here I am coming in with some French linen and this is just again just to add some variation of colours and just to create that weathered look. I wish I could really explain <laughs> um, and go into more detail as to you know why I just chose the colours that I did all I can tell you is that I did have a photo as an initial reference point which gave me clues on how to build up these colours because each colour is another layer and the lighter colours will help make things look a little bit more washed out and rustic and you know when you do when you're going for that faux stone finish that I'm going for right now um, by building up these colours and textures and things like that um, what that means is that you are getting a very natural look alright so I'm going back now to my watered down burlap with an artist brush and then I, this is just really really good fun like I'm just going to speckle this all over the piece and it's just really great messy fun maybe not so great for my wall behind I'm <laughs> sorry wall but it is a really great fun just just to do as an artist so when I was looking at the photo of the water fountain there were speckles all over it and this is again is another sign of age um, so just again to I'm thinking of getting that faux stone effect and replicating this photo that I have seen uh, which I can also link below, which is on Pinterest, um, then, yeah, it was just to create a very sort of faded grandeur um, speckled look. If I felt like any of the speckles were just way too strong or thick or blobby, then I would just come in with a bit of kitchen roll and just give them a tap, and then that will just soften them up a little bit more. Also, just keep in mind, as it dries, the paint will also soften, so it won't look as stark as what it does when it's wet. So I'm now coming in with the uh, watered down chocolate and I'm basically just following the same processes again but I am focusing more down on the muscadine wine area where you know it would where the darker colours suit it. Alright, so now I have a putty knife and some watered down burlap. I have, when doing this technique, it is better to make sure that the furniture is well saturated and that you only use a little bit of a paint at the time and then drag the paint down. If you go in there with very dry furniture and a lot of paint, then it's just going to look very blobby and just it just won't look very good if I'm, on, if I'm honest. That being said, if you do go in with too much paint, just get your water mister, give it a spritz and that will break and distress some of the paint up. The reason why I'm doing this is because, again, I am thinking of a water fountain that might have once been painted and this is just going to make it look like some of that paint has tripped away over many, many years. All right, I'm going to get a little bit nerdy and sciencey here. So obviously I put a little bit of copper on here. And whenever you think of copper mixing with water, it obviously oxidizes and turns green. At least I think it does. If somebody wants to correct me, feel free to do that. But also anything that has had a lot of water over it, you know, on it over time, tends to turn a little bit green. So what I did here was I mixed a little bit of tree frog green with a little bit of palmetto to create that uh, watery effect. So I'm really focusing this on these panels here just because I think, you know, again, I'm, go I'm going to little be a little bit sciencey, but if the water, you know, this is, this is the top of the water fountain where the water tends to be and the taps and things. So this is where it is most likely to have got the most weathered. I am putting a little bit around the keyholes here because obviously there is copper on them. Um, and also I just think it would look really good if I'm being honest. The green would contrast very nicely with the muscadine wine and add a little bit of drama. Alright, so I'm moving back now to my muscadine wine and patting it again with my artist brush. The reason I am doing this is again, I've 
since the last time I did this, I have done a lot. Like we've done a lot of speckles. I have done a lot of watery drips and things like that. So I just want to come in again and soften these up um, because I just don't want it to look, I want it to look rustic, but I don't want it to look ugly. Just to be clear, we're not covering all of those drips, all we're doing is softening some of it up so that they don't look too stark and in your face. I'm adding some copper gilding wax to the Woody Ben trim here because this was a little bit grand at one point, that's what I'm thinking. Um, and I'm just basically dry brushing the gilding wax on top of this because I still want some of the muscadine wine to come through and I also still want the copper gilding wax or the copper, you know, to look like it has begun to distress over time. Okay, so this has been left overnight and it's now time to start waxing. So I have sprayed on some easy peasy spray wax, which I am spraying in sections. I am then coming in with a little artist brush and some Best Dang Waxing Brown and I am focusing that brown wax all around those edges. The reason why I have put on the easy peasy spray wax first is because that will act as a base. So that means that if I, when I then come in with my brown wax and if I make any mistakes with my brown wax, I can then just spray some easy peasy spray wax on some kitchen towel or on my brush and just blend that out. Um, and it will act as a little bit of an eraser, but it will also act as a medium to blend the wax with and soften the wax up. Just on a little side note guys, and I'm going a little bit off topic here, but a lot of you like to know what I did to the top. So for this, I just sanded the top down to the grain. I used some no paid gel stain in Georgian Cherry, which has a lot of red in it. And I basically then just applied that to the top. Um, I didn't do anything other than that with it. No special paint work, just the no paint gel stain by Dixie Belle. Okay, so I am going to put brown wax on the edges of the door panels and also the edges of the drawers. Um, I will then go in after 30 minutes and I will remove any excess wax. So what happens with the waxes is that it soaks into the wood, it then hardens and then it protects the wood and the paint. And it is my preference over top coats normally. So, however, after a certain period of time, the wax will stop soaking into the wood because the wood can only take so much. So what happens then is that the wax will sit on top of the wood indefinitely so that is why you need to go in and wipe off any excess. Okay and this is the finished look. If you guys enjoyed this look don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe making sure that you click on those notifications. Also let me know whether or not you've tried to look like this before or drop in the comments and let me know if you want to try look like this. I always love to hear what you guys have to say. So thank you again and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.